Hello folks, I hope that you are having just a great, great day today. Today we're going to take a look at another short story in the Best of Lee Bracket collection, which is a bunch of science fiction short stories uh, for you. And today we're taking a look at the last short story in here, The Queer Ones, which is a 41-page short story. I read it in two days. Uh, it, was, it took me a little bit over an hour to knock out. And uh, it was published in 1956. Uh, for Venture Science Fiction Magazine. Venture Science Fiction Magazine, 1956. Now, this one's a little bit different than the previous nine short stories. Um, the previous nine short stories that we've done for you by Lee Brackett have all been Sword and Planet uh, short stories. Um, sword, by Sword and Planet, what I mean is uh, they are lower tech science fiction stories. They talk about the exploration of our solar system, or in one case, Altair. Um, they have lower tech, they're encountering tribes of people, um, they're inspired by John Carter of Mars, which is a low tech style of uh, exploration that was created by Edgar Rice Burroughs, and they're all sort of influenced uh, by, by Edgar Rice Burroughs' John Carter of Mars series. He also wrote um, another series in Venus, which is also similar to what you're getting here. Um, and so all the stories that have been by, by Lee Brackett have been Sword and Planet stories. They're science fiction, absolutely, uh, but low-tech science fiction short stories. Um, and so uh, with, with, with lower technologies. Uh, but this one is different. Um, it's not Sword and Planet. It's just normal science fiction set on Earth. Uh, now, it cracks open with uh, a conversation that's being had between our main character who works at a local paper um, at a small Appalachian town, which is the center, uh, which is the, the county uh, uh, head, head of its county, about 15,000 people in it, a uh, small Appalachian town, um, uh, but it's the center of the government for its capital, uh, for its cap, uh, county rather, and uh, so it has a number of people that live in and around it for that reason, uh, and our main character, um, who works for that story will be um, the person for for the forty you know forty pages or so. Uh, so we open up um, the person uh, who is they're having some conversations with um, some local folks. Uh, they are brought to the he's brought to the hospital by one of his friends who's a friend also of the paper named Doc. Uh, and there's also this young uh, doctor who's also there at the hospital. Two and the two of them are going to meet um, our our guy who's a reporter for the local paper. Uh, and, our, and our primary point of view character, and they're going to present a case uh, that they have recently discovered. Uh, there is a, a lady um, who is having some issues with her son, so she brought her son in to have him investigated by the, the doctors, and the doctors have done every scan they can. Um, so he looks at it, uh, and the first scan is his x-rays, and his x-rays don't look very, very different. He's missing some bones, he has some new organs that they haven't seen before, um, he doesn't look human. Uh, they suspect he might be a mutant. Um, then they show him his blood, and his blood is also a blood type that has never been discovered before. It's a unique blood type. So they believe uh, that this boy might wind up being a mutant. He also looks a little weird uh, and uh, has, has, has a few odd ways of looking. Uh, so uh, the doc and our point of view character, the reporter, are going to go over and talk to the families uh, to find out more about what's happening with the kid, maybe find out uh, some more context, what's happening, uh, and that sort of a thing. They drive over uh, to, to the family and they talk to the family, uh, and uh, the family uh, tells them basically uh, that, they're, that the child looks a lot like his dad, uh, and his dad w w worked for the local electricians. Uh, he came through the valley uh, fixing TVs. Uh, he worked on their TV. Um, he was really polite to the people at the farm. Uh, th then he, uh, hit him and, and uh, the mother uh, began to court each other, if you will. Uh, they had sex. Uh, she had a child from that, but, but he left her and never came back, so he's not been taking care of the child since then, and they're not happy with that. Um, you know, they, they want him to do right by the, the child that he has, um, and, he, and the mother doesn't like the child at all. She says, he's no child of mine, you know, he's not my grandkid, um, he's no Tate, uh, their last name is Tate, um, he's no Tate, uh, even though that's his last name, um, 
and uh, so, so there's definitely some 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 resentment uh, in the family for the for the for the man uh, for the strange man. Uh, so the doctor and our reporter suspect that what's happening uh, is uh, is that uh, that that the, that the parent might be the first mutant, uh, the man. Um, so they start driving back uh, from the Tates. Uh, and on their way back, they encounter a storm, a, a non a storm. It doesn't look like a normal storm. Um, and this weird sh uh, colored lightning bolt flashes out and uh, hits the car, barely misses the car. Uh, it knocks our protagonist free from the car. Uh, and then another lightning bolt hits the car and kills the doctor in it. Uh, so the doctor dies. Uh, and that's about seven or eight pages into the 41 page short story. So I'll leave you there. What's going to happen next? Uh, what's going on with the boy? Who's his dad? Uh, you'll find out all that more uh, in the rest of the short story. Now, I do like uh, the, the description of Appalachia. So he grew up in central Appalachia, in, in southern West Virginia, um, in small towns uh, in West Virginia. It did feel like somebody who had done research or had lived in my area. So I, I appreciate that Lee Brackett actually uh, made a story that felt like it was true to my people and my, and my culture. Uh, so thank you, Lee Brackett. Uh, for that, uh, she never like just dismisses the people as rednecks, which they aren't. Uh, she definitely gives them color and um, significance, which I appreciate. I think she did a good job with that. Uh, the story does have some occasional horror elements to it, although it's not a horror story uh, in the same sense that a traditional horror story would be, uh, but it does have the occasional horror element to it. Uh, but this is, I would still classify this as just pure science fiction. Um, and then uh, it does have the use of a term which has been said that this term is not nice uh, and it uses that term a few times. Uh, it is not in the first uh, half or even like the first 80% of the, of the story, but like the last 20% of the story, it's said a few times. Uh, and so just so you're going in, uh, there is a term that's used uh, that's not uh, appropriate for mod modern day people at all. Uh, and so... Uh, just so you're aware, again, this is published in the 50s, uh, and it's it's you know it's as the as, as the pulp era is dying out and, and the the novel era is starting. So Lee Brackett's still writing short stories in that sort of pulp era tradition, which is what she grew up in, uh, and what she wrote in. So you know, but yeah, it it does not age well that term in the story. Um, but I'll go ahead and uh, leave you to it. Uh, but I do enjoy the story. I think it's well written. I think there's some clever turns of phrases here and there. Again, I think the description of the people, my people, uh, was good too, uh, by by bracket. Uh, so overall, I give it a seven out of ten um, out of my review. And there you are. That's my take on and, and a quick synopsis of uh, the queer ones by Lee Brackett. Uh, have you read the short story? What did you think of it? Did you like it or dislike it? Uh, I would be more than happy to engage with it further in the comments below. If you like this video, why not hit that subscribe button? There's going to be a lot more of these science fiction, fantasy, and horror short stories to follow. And then finally, hey, I just want to thank you for taking some time out of your day and investing it and watching my videos. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives, right? And we're being pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling. And I appreciate it. Thanks again and have a great day.